Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Namio. What? And, oh my god, this week. It this is... is... This is a week where it's just... I think it sweeps. Maybe. It's its the week of retcon. Ret, some retcon and, and some <laughs> shit I did not see this. Yeah. Um, well, and... I, I, was, I was bad again this week. I didn't get a chance to watch any of the episodes until uh, yesterday. And so I, I marathoned them all. And so I, I had gotten a few spoilers uh, just in my news feed because on what, what day was it? Uh, National Siblings Day uh, General Hospital posted a, a picture of uh, Nathan and Britt and I'm like what? What? Yeah what? <laughs> Now see if you had, if you had stayed current with the show it would not have been so much of a spoiler I know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's me being naughty. Yeah. But... Stupid me with things to do all of a sudden. Ah, it's annoying. Ah, that happens sometimes, though. But, yeah, that is one of the big things that made me go, wait, what? Uh, that, that honestly just kind of came out of nowhere. It did, and... <laughs> and... And even before that, what else came out of nowhere is the fact that Madeline and, o and, and Obrecht are sisters. What? I was like, wait, what? I mean, what? And Obrecht explained it all. You know, she she you know, she explained the whole thing, you know, move to America, you lost your accent and, and made it some rich man. How would they feel if you were born in a in a different country? <laughs> I don't think they would care very much <laughs> at this point. She's, I don't know. She's got money, she married into money, who the fuck cares? I'm just wondering I'm I'm just wondering who she married and had Nina with. Um, I don't know. And more Someone importantly, named Reeves apparently. Yeah, and more importantly, who the hell is is, is uh, Nathan's father? That's what yeah, I. Yeah, because apparent because apparently Obrecht is his mother, and she gave him up, yeah. and his father isn't Faison. Yeah. Because if his father was Faison, she would have taken him with her, and probably never had Brit. Yeah. But no, I, I, and I still don't know why it, it's Faison left. I'm, I'm guessing Faison convinced her to leave him behind for whatever reason. Probably because, well, they were going to do something dangerous. I mean, hi, look at the life they led. Yeah. So in, in that sense, it is a little bit more understandable that she, that Obrecht is like, here, take, take son, leave him, you know, you, you raise him. I'm going to go do dangerous things now. Yeah. Which doesn't necessarily, which doesn't make her a good mother, you know, in the sense that you know you still abandon your kid. But at the same time, which is better, abandon your kid, leave your kid with somebody else that would take care of the kid properly, or take the kid into danger? You know, which, which ultimately, which do you think would be better? I guess is the question there. Ah, I don't know, but it was so, and it's so funny because. Uh... I suppose we should back up a little bit, because what happens is, you know, the, the cliffhanger last week was um, Nathan and Sam uh, entrapping, uh, you know, the person who wants, wanted to kill Nakamura, and it turns out to be Madeline. And, you know, this week, uh, you know, Nathan reveals that, uh, you know, Madeline's his mother, or, and, uh, you know, reveals to Sam and Silas that, you know, he's not Nathan West, he's James Reeves, and uh, and they're, they're perfectly fine with it, like Sam and Silas are like, oh, okay, that's what's been going on this whole time, yeah. and Nathan's pissed! As he should be! Yeah, he sh as he should be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, rested his own mother over this, which, very, very justified, by the way. Yeah, well, finding out that, you know, she killed his sister and has been trying to get him to blame and, in a, you know, put the uh, 
blame on an innocent man the entire time. Not just oh oh oh, not just his sister. Yeah, also but his Nakamura. sisters, not not just Nakamura, uh, but also his sister's baby. Yes, Silas's baby with Nina, because, which is gonna yeah cause... because <laughs> Madeline is 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 I I want to use the word sociopathic, but I don't know if that's the proper word I want to use. Uh, but, but, I don't know. But she is she is insane. That 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 I can. I could definitely say with, without any um, that word is escaping me, but but yeah. but but I could definitely say that. Yeah. Indeed. So yeah, they really are sisters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so you know, Madeline ends up in a cell uh, right across from Obrecht, and they're like, "You, you." <laughs> yes, I do. I then... do love. I do love how that that first part played out. Madeline is sitting there crying because, oh my God, I, I, I'm not, I'm not able to get out of this one or whatever, and Obrecht is like, shut up. I, I detest the get... sounds of self pity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, even if it's coming from Obrecht, yeah, that that was that was that was good. And why is Obrecht there? Well, that they, as I suspected last week. Brit did lead Dante and the cops right there to Obrecht at Elizabeth's house. They they got Obrecht, but not before Elizabeth accidentally got shot. You know, because Nicholas tried to, you know, Nicholas was playing hero yeah. and, and tried to get the gun. The gun went off. Elizabeth, she only got shot in the shoulder. But it's I know. still... I know, they were like freaking the fuck out. They're like, oh my god, she's gonna die, she's gonna die. I'm like, she was shot in the shoulder. The you only... put pressure on the wound right away, she's gonna be fine. Yeah, pretty much. Although, from what it looked like, it was maybe partially shock, too. Like, oh my god, holy shit. Boom. You know? Yeah, you know, that's understandable, but yeah. she's not gonna die. No. <laughs> not unless but, uh... it was, like, poison in the bullet or whatever. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Who else was shot and poisoned with the bullet? Oh, yeah, Jerry Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> But that I, I don't think Obrecht could have had that. I don't know where she got the gun. Well, it's Obrecht. She probably has them all over the place. Eh, she probably has. She probably has them in in her female compartment. <laughs> God, I hope not. That would. Um, be uh, but yeah, it, 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 it was kind of funny because you know Britt goes to the cops. You know she puts on a wire and they you know coordinate all of this. And, you know, she gets there and finds that, you know, Nicholas is there, too. And, like, he will not stop yelling at her. Yeah. And being like, you're an awful person, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and... which, which, in his defense, he doesn't know that this whole sting is going down. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, then he's just, twist the knife, twist the knife. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, basically, basically the, the code was... She got Ben, and she said, uh, "I'm so glad to have you back in my arms." And that was that was the signal for the cops to come in. And you know, she she handed handed Ben over to Dante. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, meanwhile, Lulu is at the police station going crazy, and twice she gets up to try and rush over there, and people stop her, which is good because that would be a stupid thing to do. Yes. I mean, Anna and, stops her, and, and and Anna even relates. Hey, you know what? This happened to me when when you know when Robin was younger, which we've seen in flashbacks. Yes. So so we've seen that, and of course, fans of the show that are older, they've seen it too. They saw it firsthand. <laughs> so uh, and and by older, I mean even older than me, because <laughs> this this was back during the '80s. I would not have understood what I was watching any of it if I had watched. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, and then the second time Lulu tries to go, in comes Dante. With the baby! Yay, and the baby. They're reunited, and while they're getting reunited, getting acquainted with their son, um, you know, Britt goes with them to the hospital, sees that Elizabeth is okay. She and Nicholas have a, have the moment, you know, and Nicholas is still, you know, kind of on her, and she's, she's not denying it, to Britt's credit. She's like, you know what, no, I, 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 I this is, you know, this is my thing. I'm not, you know, all I can really do is apologize and then move on. You know, there's, 
not much I really can do at this point. And yeah. she might be right. I mean, I'm sure the writers will come up with some way for her to redeem herself in their eyes at some point or another. But, but right now, all she could do apologize and move on. And after she left, you know, she left Nicholas's side. You know, she went to the police station, said goodbye to Ben. You know, which at first Dante and Lulu were a little hesitant. I can't blame them. You know, but then Lulu, Lulu's like, you know what? Yeah, give, let her have one more. We're right here. She's surrounded by cops. Yeah, not gonna happen. And even Lulu made the remark. Just, she's like, you know, for all for everything that's happened, you couldn't deny that 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 Brit really did care for and love Ben. Well, Ben wouldn't even be there um, if uh, you know if they didn't if 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 Brit hadn't given birth to him. I mean, yeah. So, so while they're not a Brit's biggest fans at this point, for obvious reasons, you know, they, they, they can at least acknowledge, hey, you know, <laughs> you know, she, she did, she did some good there. Oh, wow. So, so of course, then that leads Brit to the bar. Well, well, the floating rib. Which, after Nathan gets, gets done with his mother and, and, putting her behind bars and everything and he goes there too they start drinking and yes. they start swapping life stories and it turns out that they have a lot in common because they both have awful awful mothers yes <laughs> and it turns out they have even more in common when when Obrecht <coughs> you know when, when Nathan comes down no no wait okay Nathan doesn't end up at the bar right right yet because Nathan goes home he just goes yeah. goes home. Maxie's back. Yay. Maxie and... is back, and oh my god, has she turned into an insufferable know-it-all. <laughs> Holy... I just wanted... Like, her and that random dude she's fucking. I'm like, <laughs> both of you need to shut the hell up. Oh god, Levi. Oh my god. This first scene. Okay. You know, he comes in and he's and I, and he's trying to be helpful. I understand that. Nathan is just like no, he's, he's, Nathan is just practically no selling him until, until until a Levi is like up in his face with his his happy smiley face, like like he's kind of dope, kind of derpy face. Yes. And he's like, "Why don't you tell me what your problem is? Tell me what your problem is." And then Nathan just screams, "I had to arrest my own mother." Because she killed my sister, or, or, or something to that degree. Yes. And I admit, if if, if you pay if you pay attention, if you can go and rewatch that scene, when Nathan starts walking away and Levi is still still standing there with that look on his face, like eh, it was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh. And and and. and to be fair to the both of them, as annoying as they do come off, they were trying to help. So, but Nathan eventually did go from there and go and talk to his mother again. We're, we're talking his his you know you know Blondie. Yes. You know, and Obrek recognizes him, recognizes the name, and she's like, "That's my boy." Yes. And then we see him at the bar at the bar with with Brit. Oh shit. <laughs> yes, and 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 it's so funny because uh, they tease it too because uh, you know Obrecht wants to tell Nathan that you know he's her son, and Madeline's like, "Don't you dare!" And like she keeps giving these orders to Obrecht, and she has absolutely nothing to back it up. Yeah, and like like she has no leverage whatsoever. And I'm like, okay, you know what? When Obrecht makes orders like that, she at least follows it with a threat. I'm yeah. like, Madeline Madeline just thinks uh, her word alone is going to be enough to make Obrecht not do something. And I'm like, you're stupid. Yeah, well, <laughs> look at the different lives they've led, though. You know, Obrecht, she, you know, she didn't lead the best, you know, obviously not the easiest life you know you're an international criminal of course you know you're you're, you're not going to have the easiest life so you have to be able to back up your words with whatever <laughs> actions threats what have you madeline is not used to that madeline uh, had 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 
gotten into a life to where, you know, she says jump, and people say, how the fuck high do you want me to jump? Yeah. So, and, and you know what? It all makes more sense now, because I'm remembering the conversation between Nakamura and Sam and Silas, when Nakamura mentioned a blonde woman. Yeah. Everybody thought it was Ava, who, who, to go off on her a little bit, she went and saw Silas at the hospital once she found out that Nakamura was alive, and Silas was like, wait, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> And it turns out, obviously, Ava didn't do it, and and Ava seemed to be a little hurt that Silas would think that about her. Yeah. I mean, granted, she is a killer, but that he doesn't know that for sure. And and I think she wanted to keep it that way. Once the word about Connie comes out, uh, I don't think that's going to stay there for very long. Yeah. But, but you know, they do. The two have a scene. They have a little moment together, and it was kind of kind of nice. And then Morgan comes in, like, as Silas is leaving, and he's like, do you still love him? What about me? And it's like, Morgan, yeah, like, you're a little Morgan. insecure, buddy. Oh, uh, like, I don't know what Morgan's been doing. Like, his his entire purpose this week has been to, like, show up, be randomly jealous to Ava, and then just disappear again. Yeah. And it's and he, he's, he seems to be growing a beard. And it's 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 weirding me out a little bit because it makes him look much older, mm-hmm. but he's still acting like a whiny little bitch. Yeah, I mean, I I can if if it's about a jealousy thing, I could see, I could see where he might come from on the jealousy thing. Maybe he was raised that you know, you could only love one person at a time or whatever, or maybe that's, that's how he came to that mindset at one point. And and the fun the, the great thing about that particular part is Ava even questioned him hey don't you still love Kiki in some way yeah even though you're dating me so I I don't remember if he had an answer for that one but uh, yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh so uh so back to Madeline and Obrecht they they they, they have the thing and Obrecht oh my god I, I gotta say you know I think this is what makes her kind of a more effective and good villain, is the fact that she is quite genre savvy, from yeah. what I've seen. She, yeah, she's made her stupid mistakes, of course, but she's very genre savvy. Like, like we were discussing, she, you know, she doesn't make a threat without some kind of backup, you know. And she was going over the at least, you know, a few of the reasons why she should tell Nathan, including the fact that his sister lives in this city and the two of them could meet up. Yes. You know, because because and... there's there's that like that one um, I know I read about it recently. This this one thing uh, uh, I think it's like genetic attraction or or, or something like that. Yeah. Where, you know that well, could be a thing. <laughs> well, and uh, it's happened before. Uh, you know, twins or siblings separated at birth who just happened to uh, you know run across each other not know they're related and wind up getting married. It's happened more than once. Yeah, I mean, I've, I mean, we've had, I think it was cousins of ours, who met up, got married, and then after they had been married, had a few kids, re- learned that they were cousins, and they were like, oh shit, but they also figured, okay, we've made it this far, may as well, you know, it's all, it's all still legal, you know, may as well, we've already done everything, what's the point in breaking it off now, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Oh, and it looked like I, I, I have to admit one, once Nathan and Britt started drinking, they went back to his place I, I, was, I, I, was, I was going the whole accidental incest when yes. you see that girl at the bar and you take her home and look, she's got the same DNA jazz hands <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I yeah, don't know and, why I want to set that to the tune of Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> I don't know either, because since it's accidental incest, you should set it to accidental racist. Yeah, well, well, see that that for some reason I don't know that song. Yeah, uh, that's well, we actually will... probably a good thing. It's a very bad song. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, but yeah. Oh. So yeah, and so like that they, I love the way that they were teasing that, like, like because they totally go home, you know, go go back to Nathan's place, 
uh, fully intending to, ha to have sex, uh, but they get there... And they mostly just talk, and then Maxie comes in and is annoying as hell, uh, and uh, she kind of kills the mood. And they don't like they don't even kiss. Yeah. And then Nathan's like, "Oh, we're both really drunk. This is probably a bad idea. Why don't you just crash here?" And basically, they just agree to be friends. And <laughs> which is good. Very yeah. good. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, Britt's like, you know, that's probably for the best anyway. I still, you know, have feelings for Nicholas. Uh, yeah, and and during all of that, while Maxie is in there, you know, Britt, Britt pretty much in her drunken stupor reveals everything to Maxie, everything that went yeah. on. And Maxie's first reaction is, oh, my God, Dante and Lulu have their baby. Oh, my God, Yay! Yeah, <laughs> Maxie is super insensitive. It's like, uh, 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 yeah, uh, Maxie, uh, yeah, hey, drunk woman living with guilt right here in your living room. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like I wanted to reach through and just, hey, you know, she all, you know, she also fucked over your best friend for a while. Yeah. Oh, maybe, yeah. you know, and it, maybe it's, yeah, or maybe it'll, it, uh, it'll probably eventually hit her. That, you know. And then she'd be like, oh, God, you're a baby stealer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But speaking of babies, you know, D Dante and Lulu, they get Ben, and they get him home where Olivia's waiting with surprise stuff. At Keep in mind, this whole week takes place over the same evening. Yes. So this is like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning by the time they get Ben home. And Olivia is there with a surprise, you know, with, with surprise celebrations and stuff. Mm hmm <laughs> and, and while they're there, you know, they decide, okay, do we want to keep the name, do we want to keep him named Ben, do we want to change his name? And they decide to call him Rocco. Which is a horrible name. That's I'm sorry. That's the porn star. I'm like, what the hell, what the fuck is Rocco? Uh, I, but but it, it's hey, it's the writers. He could be called Rocky. I bet you they'll call him Rocky as he gets older. Not a bad I name. Know. I don't know, but I I I hate I hate the name. I, I yeah. Do. But uh, but not long after that, Obrecht convinces a guard to call Dante to let her call Dante. Rather, I don't know how. I I guess she just hadn't had her one phone call yet, and hey. This is good. This is a fine time as any. Three o'clock in the morning. Let me call the cop that help. Let me call the cop that arrested me, and, and get him to come down to the station. And he goes, and she mentions that you know she mentions the other embryo, I, I, either other embryo or other child that yeah. they thought was destroyed. And it's like what? Okay, this this is obviously something Obrecht had up her sleeve for a while, and most likely light her ass off even to Brit cuz cuz yeah. Brit knows they were destroyed yeah well as far as Brit knows uh the first embryo that Obrick tried to implant wasn't viable right like that's what they've been saying the whole time and now she pulls out and she's like another child and I'm like what how are they going to twist Why? this one? <laughs> and so yeah, I don't. I, I don't even know. I, I, I know. just. I just have to wonder how that's going to turn out. <laughs> I don't oh, know. You well, know what? They, it, they need to give Obrecht her own mini series where we just swallow her around and see what she does. Because <laughs> that could be both. That could be both kind of awesome and hilarious at the same time. Oh, uh, but uh, yeah. So and you know, it's like if you don't actually see a miscarriage happen on screen or something like that. I think we just need to assume that all potential babies became actual babies uh, or are going to become actual babies when the writers decide, hey, let's pull this out. Because you know, at some point we're going to find out that Nina didn't lose her baby and that Silas has another kid out there somewhere. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's bound to happen. Very much bound to happen. And oh god, there was a thought. There was a thought. There was a thought. Okay, Obrecht to Madeline to to uh, to Silas and Sam. Which they 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 their night after you know after everything went down, they they 
talked everything out. Silas spent some time with Danny, and and he was kind of kind of waxing about you know being a father, you know, which you would do, especially if you find out that oh oh you killed my wife. Wait, my wife was pregnant with my kid. What? You know, the look on Silas's face when he turned around, he's like, wait, what the fuck did you say, bitch? I'm gonna cut you. <laughs> you know, I, I think he even said, you know, I wish I had the capacity to kill you. Yes. But he doesn't. Which is probably a good thing, especially with Nathan right there. <laughs> Indeed. Although I think Nathan, well, okay, I don't think Nathan would have let Silas get away with it, you know, legally, but, you know, I don't think Nathan could have blamed him at all. That's even true. even if it is his mother. Or no, not his mother, technically his aunt. Yes, but as far as, far as he knows, she's his mother. Yeah, and okay, I, I've, I've got to say something about some of the commenters I've seen on, on the various General Hospital pages. Some of them are saying, no, it's baby Georgie, she's she's the one that, that's the, really the other embryo. It's like, no. No, no that's, she that, isn't. That's already been wrapped up and tossed away. If, oh, <sighs> Uh, no, that's stupid. Besides, Maxie got pregnant before Britt did, if I remember correctly. Yes. So, no. Because it was Maxie coming in and wanting another embryo that made Britt uh, and Obrecht come up with the plan to steal the embryo in the first place. Yeah. It's like, pay attention, review your history, people. Come on. That's that's all there is to that. <laughs> Oh, so to to kind of hop off of that particular train, we do have other characters this week that that that, that we need to talk about, like uh, Carly and Franco. <laughs> and Franco again, he is he is insane, not stupid. And he well, he's not even out. he's not even particularly insane anymore. He's just really really smart and uh... <laughs> yes, he is like. He is currently the, the I, I guess, the the good to Obrecht's evil, basically. Yeah. Pretty genre savvy, pretty intelligent. And and people, and, and again, going back to the commenters, people are saying, yeah, he's going to be killed off soon. Like, like, blah, blah, blah. it's like, why? Because he's getting too smart for Sonny? And if they do that, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. Because Sonny needs to, see, see. Imagine a group of ten pegs. Sonny is up there at the ninth peg. He needs to be knocked down to about the fifth. You know, a good deal. You know, which is why, again, like I mentioned last week, his whole, all his Catholic guilt is hitting him, and I don't feel sorry for him. I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't. Bing. Oh. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not necessarily going to tap dance in the streets about it. But I don't feel sorry for him either, because it's like you brought this on yourself, you motherfucker, <laughs> and you realize it. You, you know, you know. I mean, I mean, yeah. Britt is doing the same thing, but see, at least Britt is more sympathetic than Sonny at this point. It's true. Britt, yes, it was her actions, but you know what? <coughs> you know what drove her to those actions? Her mother. She, she yeah. had no spine when it came to her mother. You know, just just like a, 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 a certain somebody I, I knew whose dad was running a company, and he had no spine for with his father. You know, same deal here. You know, yes, Britt did some wrongdoings, but she also feels massively guilty, and we also know that her mother is, is you know, her mother is Obrecht. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all you really need to say. So, so Britt, that makes Britt more sympathetic there, whereas Sonny... He shot him just because, oh, I wanted to shoot him. That's the reason he's giving. I mean, well, I... He, be he believes that AJ killed Connie mm -hmm. and got off scot-free. I really can't blame him for wanting to shoot AJ. I can't on that front. But, he also, again, he also broke his promise to Michael. Yeah. I think Sonny should just man up. Yes, it's going to hurt Michael. It's going to break the cutie a little bit more. But the break the cutie moment is coming anyway. Yeah. Man up, take it on the chin, and just deal with it. That's that. That would be my suggestion. If if I could talk to this character, sit him down, tell your son, <coughs> tell him what happened. You know, do not spin it. Do not sugarcoat it. Just tell him, look, I'm the one who killed your other. Fa I'm the one who killed AJ. Yeah. You know, your biological father. Let Michael do his thing, rant, rave, you know, cut you out of his life if he must. I can see Michael doing that. 
and then, you know, eventually, give it a few years, you two will make up, you know, yeah, that's a few years you will have lost, but you know what? That's nothing compared to the amount of years you made Michael lose to his biological father because you decided, you and Carly decided, that AJ was never going to be a good enough father for Michael, never mind the fact that AJ was trying his damnedest to do it. Yeah, AJ did some more extreme things, like hiring Faith Roscoe to kidnap him, but, you know, AJ was trying his best, and... I've, I've also looked it up a couple of times where AJ was supposedly found off the wagon. He had been drugged, and alcohol poured on him. So everybody thought he had just fallen off the wagon, including AJ. So a couple of those times were setups. So, yeah. So, 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 I, I'm willing to bet if it wasn't for that, AJ probably would have been just fine as a father. Definitely a lot less dangerous than Sonny. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, but speaking more of Sunny, <laughs> or, or actually, let me let me finish up with Carly and Franco first, because yes, cause not only did <laughs> Franco figure it out, Carly swears him to secrecy, even even though Franco is like, oh god, I want to call the cops on him, because he's like he's well, like a little boy with a ball. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Franco was being kind of a dick, because like he's laying this huge guilt trip on Carly and being like. You know, you need to uh, tell me what's going on because we promised that we would trust each other and the last time we didn't trust each other, you got kidnapped by my crazy mother and, like, lays it on thick. And, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, a... and, and, and he, you know, finally gets her, uh, you know, he, well, first he guesses it and then she confirms it and then the first thing he does is grab the phone and he's going to call the cops to get back at Sonny for being a douche to him. Yeah, which a lot of it is justified, I will admit. I mean, you know, you know the, the whole trust thing, I can see where he's coming from because, like he said, hey, last time we hid, hid things like this from each other, you got kidnapped. And I got yeah. shot. That's understandable. But, I can understand the mindset. But if we're going to talk about trust, you can't turn around and use this information... You know, yeah. To try and screw over Sunny because the whole thing is that Carly's trying to protect Sunny. Yeah, she's not trying to. Well, she's not trying to protect Sunny. It's more Michael, yeah. which she makes clear to him, and he eventually calms down. Okay, okay, fine. You know, which and and again, his, his initial reaction, I can understand that as well because Sunny just has nothing but hate for him. Justified, <laughs> which I think even Franco understands. Yeah, it's justified. But, you know, Sonny has all this over him. He's Now he has something over Sonny, which I've, I've got to be honest. You know, I, I would probably I would probably th at least think the same way. He's like, oh, I have something over one of the biggest crime, bo crime bosses in Port Charles. <laughs> Whee! That would be awesome. That would be awesome to have that kind of power over him. <laughs> uh, but... but as, as we've seen and we mentioned, Tar Carly does talk him down a little bit, says, okay, you know, no, 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 do this for Michael. And Franco's like, all right, keep your secret, you know. You know, e even even Franco, and everybody has their moments of dickery, whether it's justified or not. And this is one of Franco's moments, apparently. Uh, but meanwhile, Sonny and Ava, they have their meeting. They have the little meeting mentioning yet yeah, that AJ, AJ told Carly that Sonny is the one who shot him and, you know, basically told her, yeah, Sonny shot me because of Ava. And, and Ava, you know, a the, the gears are turning in Ava's head like, oh, shit. <laughs> this could this could be, be trouble for me. And, and Sonny explains it away, tries to ease her pain. He's like, no, 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 no. You were there. No, I think the only reason was you were there and he was joking you. Know, at least that's what I told Carly. And, and so he goes on his they go on their merry way. And and the same place, in fact, in the same booth later on comes Luke and Julian. You know, Julian after checking up on Sam, he and Luke have the talk about the moving the drugs through Port Charles. And and I and it's Luke in, in quotes uh, still yes. because I don't think this is the real Luke. This cannot be the real Luke. No. No. I mean I mean if Luke really wanted to get back into the mob business I don't think he would be... He, he knows better than to go up against Sonny. Yeah. He knows better. 
he can, well, he and I'm pretty sure Luke. Thrones. I'm pretty sure Luke would not uh, bring drugs into Port Charles too. No, no, no. Alcohol maybe, but not drugs. Yeah, the Luke that I've known hasn't really been much of a druggie. Yeah. I don't know about when he first came on the scene when he was working with the mob directly, but I do know that Luke nowadays, or even as far back as like the end of the '90s, two th- you know, late '90s, early 2000s, Luke, from what I understand and remember, isn't much of a drug guy. You know, he, yeah. he you know, except for alcohol, which <laughs> he's he's been a booze hound ever since. Uh, but with the things that have happened to him, you can kind of understand. You know, needing a drink every now and then. Oh, God. Let's see. I mean, you know, being a mob hitman, watching his best, you know, his best friend dying because his best friend tried to take the hit, which, oh, actually, his best friend didn't die. He was just, you know, recovered and sent to Pentonville. Uh, let's see. Having to be on the run from the mob, um, saving the world, having his wife kidnapped, <coughs> having his wife come back and nearly raped in his own bedroom, and then offing the guy that tried to do it. Um, let's see, you know, Mob Wars, Cassidines, etc. Uh, so he, he's been through quite a bit over the years. <laughs> I yeah. think he deserves to be able to drink as much as he wants. <coughs> so I think he's earned it, for the most part. Oh, and, 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 and he's still... And, and this whole meeting between uh, Luke and Julian happened well, Nate... Nathan and Britt are right there at the bar. Yeah. And and even Julian's like, you know, there's a cop over there. Luke's like, I'm an art connoisseur. I'm meeting with my dealer. <laughs> Which, not necessarily a lie. Uh, and there was a scene, you know, at the, towards the beginning of the week between Luke and Tracy. They were, you know, talking about her birthday gift and how he wants to suddenly come and work at ELQ to be closer to her. Yeah. It's like, hi, red flag. Bing! Office work? Never been much of Luke's forte. And Tracy realizes this, but he somehow convinces her, especially <laughs> buying the artwork for her, which she knows, but, you know, the, what kind of artwork is a surprise? Mm-hmm. And, if, and the surprise being that Luke doesn't really know, and he just tells Julian to pick out something that looks artsy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so after they have their meeting, uh, in, in which Luke is like, yeah, you best, you best go down to the dock to make sure those boys are... are, are bringing the shipments in you know ordering julian jerome around of all people just what what okay whoever luke is what does he have over julian i just i, I don't just know. gotta know i mean it's obviously <laughs> okay some people have speculated it's jerry jacks but i doubt it it would be the other way around because jerry jacks was rescued by julian jerome yeah so jerry would owe them but who would jerome own oh rather not own who, who, who would, who would I don't know. I mean, I mean, it can't be Robert because you know, you know, Robert, Robert Scorpio would not, he would not be going for this. He, no. he he's more of a by the buck cop good guy. You know, so that it wouldn't be Robert. Uh, if anybody, I doubt it would be Victor, or, or anybody from the higher ups in the WSB. Highly doubt that, uh, especially since Victor. He does not have Luke's body, you know. Victor yeah. seems to be a little more, you know, heavy set than I, Luke does. Victor has his own shit going on. I don't think he really would give his shit. Yeah. Uh, some people have speculated Phase On, but I think Phase On uh, is than Luke. Yeah. That wouldn't work. Um. Again, I I, I I'm thinking Lord Ashton. You know, because he he's done his tough stuff with the crime. He's, you know. He's worked with people to try and take over Port Charles. You know, I, I, there was the whole cartel thing in the early 90s that Lord Ashton was a part of. And we haven't seen him back in a while. So it, it's... And, and, and Lord Ashton was once married to Tracy! <laughs> so that that's where that's where I'm getting that connection. Oh. But to leave... Oh, can't leave that yet because Luke... Again, keep in mind, this is like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Call gets a call from Sonny, who says, Hey, get your ass over here, I need to talk to you. Because Sonny had a visit from Rick, who basically blamed Sonny for, you know, trying to kill him. You know, for wanting to kill him. Well, Sonny's like, wait, well, what? Then, who told you uh, that? Yeah, 
Well, and yeah, Rick is like, you know, Luke told me that you want to kill me, and I'm just letting you know, A, I am no longer working for Julian Jerome, mm-hmm. and B, I'm not doing this. If you kill me, you're killing the wrong guy. Yeah, pretty much. And we have no reason to suspect Rick at this point. Yeah, Rick has done some bad things in his time on the show before, but we have no reason for to believe he would do anything of the sort like <coughs> fuck Julian Jerome. Rick knows better. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, so does Luke, which makes this whole out-of-character thing that much more jarring. Yes. And that Luke knows better. <laughs> oh, God. And, and I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to some of his language, too. Because he called Sonny his dog. Yeah, like, I don't know what the... Well, and, uh... Like, the conversation he had with Sonny, like... Both Sonny and Olivia are going, What the hell is going on? Because, you know... Uh... Uh, you know, Olivia is gushing about, uh... You know, their shared grandchild. Mm-hmm. You know? And Luke and is like Luke's it, whatever. Like, yeah, he's like, I don't really care, and that's not like Luke at all! No! And, and <laughs> While Luke probably wouldn't be all squee and ee at this point, I mean, if he, he, if he had been younger, he probably would have squeed a little bit more. But he's old, so he doesn't, he doesn't have much of the squee in him. But he would, he, he would, he would be visibly pleased that he yeah. has a grandson. And, uh, like, and then he starts going off about how, you know, the, the sight of a baby makes him think about his own mortality, and he l- turns to his head, he's like, doesn't that make you think about it too? Because, you know, all these young people trying to come in and take your territory, and I'm like, uh... Wow. That <laughs> is dark, Luke. And, and Olivia, Olivia's actually goes, okay, you know what, when you do eventually go and see uh, your grandchild, uh keep all this morbid crap to yourself and Luke like he laughs and then doesn't say anything yeah it's like dude what the fuck like I, yeah. I, I have to wonder now cause, cause now, now I, 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 oh god I don't even know how Lord Ashton talked at the time I don't know if he was more into using the, the you know the lingo that the kids were trying to use in the, in the, in the sense of you know like Sonny calling you know Luke calling Sonny his dog or, or being yeah. as morbid, although I suppose over the years it could have developed, you know, the, the morbid stuff, because I want to say Lord Ashton was one of those that was incarcerated after the cartel. I don't remember. I don't know, but, you know, <coughs> I, do, I do, like, the guy who's pretending to be Lou, you have to give him credit for being one hell of an actor, because, mm-hmm. I mean, he's got Tracy fully fooled. Hmm. And then, uh, although she she does she is getting suspicious, yeah. But because uh, she's like, why would you want to come work at ELQ? You hate working. And he gives her this song and dance about how the, you know if he's working there, they can be closer together, and uh, and it makes her feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And uh, you know when. Sonny confronts him and be and is like, "Why are you trying to make trouble between me and Rick? What the hell's going on?" Uh, he makes up this story about how um, you know Rick was bad mouthing Sonny, and uh, you know basically Luke was just defending Sonny's honor. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely yeah. No more more red flags. More more going up. Yeah. <laughs> And then all of them are going to be up, and the people are going to be like, "Luke, you, you, you know, you know, dude, playing Luke, uh, you're, 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 your cover's getting blown." Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Just a little blown there, because, because all of these red flags. I mean, you hitting on Kiki, making making the remark about Brit's ass, or or calling Brit a nice piece of ass to her fiance yeah. at the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. Brit is hot, but come on. You know, you don't have to say something like that, especially to her fiance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you can say, yeah, you know, she's she's pretty awesome. You know, she looks great. She has a great personality. All right. You know, uh, things like that. And that 
and speaking of Brit, getting back to the hospital, which we left all, God, how many minutes ago? Like 40 minutes ago. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Give or take. So Nicholas is there. He sees Elizabeth. They have the conversation where Elizabeth is basically like, do you still love Brit? And they try to talk things out. And you can tell they're, they're having moments together. And, and, and then Rick comes in. Yep. And Rick, having having just heard on the radio, he's like, oh my god, I, he started freaking out, came down. <laughs> and then yeah. the attendant is like, okay, only one of you can stay for a little while. And, and Elizabeth basically sends Nicholas home to his son, who Nicholas still has to ex- ha- had to explain to Spencer. And it's like, aww. And Spencer yeah. spills the beans about what he saw in the barn. Yes. And of course, Nicholas isn't thinking much of it at first, because eh, you're probably mistaken. But but watch, it's going to come back, and he's going to be like, oh shit, my son was right. I feel like an ass now. You know, these kids have... Uh, I, I do kind of like how the kids seem to uh, be really... Um, Intuitive. And on the major plot threads, uh, you know, the kids were the reason that Franco was able to find and rescue Carly, because mm-hmm. the sh- cops sure as shit couldn't figure anything out. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, now Spencer is probably going to be the key to Sonny figuring out that Luke's the one, uh, or, you know, whoever's wearing the Luke mask is, is after him. Yeah. It, it, it's oh god and I've seen people complain about Spencer too like like he's a spoiled little brat it's like yeah he is but he's an entertaining spoiled little brat he is I, I adore Spencer he's so adorable like <laughs> you know he's like I tried to fire the butler and you know it, he doesn't he didn't he didn't leave he doesn't respect my authority either and Nicholas is like that's because you don't have any <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, and, and as far as on screen, like like child correction, child discipline, what do you expect him to do? Do you do yeah. we expect him to like haul off and like backhand him every now and then, or, or or like dust drop him, you know, slap him on the backside of the head or something? Do we are you expecting him to do that? I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's obvious Nicholas spoils him to a degree, but at the same time, Nicholas, from what I've, well, from what has been seen so far, is pretty firm in a lot of shit. Yeah. So, so Nicholas is not the worst parent out there. Just, just, just gonna well, throw and, that. I mean, re- realistically, I mean, Spencer, he's he's harmless. I mean, he's not hurting anybody, and he's gonna eventually grow out of this. Yeah. Especially, if, you know, as long as Nicholas keeps his level of parenting where it is, he, he should be fine. Yeah. As long as the writers allow it. <laughs> Oh, but to get back to Rick for a moment, he he and Elizabeth they have their own moment, and he declares his intention to fight for the woman he truly desires, and and, and he's gonna fight for Elizabeth, and it's like, oh, dude, you're a little pushy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, I I know you want to you want to make you want to make your amends, you want to you know you want to get you know you want to be with Elizabeth again. That's fine. You know, make your intentions known. Sure, whatever. Uh, but don't be so pushy, dude. Just don't. Uh, God damn. <laughs> oh, so what else have we... What have we missed? Did we miss anything? Because I think... I know, I know we spent a good half of the show talking about Obrecht and Madeline this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's still even more to go on about them in this week, I'm sure. Just, oh, God. Although I did I did see the previews for uh, this week, or at least, you know, the the previews that are supposed to be going up for the show that's supposed to go on today we're recording this on monday and it looks like we're going to be coming back to uh, patrick and sabrina finally about and, freaking time yeah and it looks like the dawn of a new day so time is actually going to progress more than just a few hours <laughs> wait what <laughs> yeah what <laughs> yeah it's, it's going to be the following day oh my god <laughs> that's just crazy talk yeah, and and I think I I think I mentioned this last week too, or or at least at some point once we knew AJ died, Patrick he it looks like Patrick is going to start feeling the the, the guilt because he was the one to perform the surgery, and he, he it looks like at least from the previews he's he's it's it's going to start hitting him and eating at him, and mm. and, and it's like yeah yeah it is and he <coughs> and 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 see here's the thing. Patrick and Sonny, both both in this particular situation, they 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 have 
they, they both have the guilt. Sonny for shooting him, and Patrick because he's the one who performed the surgery, and after which surgery, AJ ended up dying. Yeah. So, and, and again, it goes back to, like I was, like when I was comparing Sonny to Britt, Patrick, more sympathetic because he was doing his job. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a little, ru- he rushed into it before he was, before he was truly ready, or, or, or so it seems. <laughs> but, but you know, even, even if he hadn't, there was, you know, there was no way of telling whether or not the surgery would have done this. Yeah. You know, there's, there's just no way. So, he, he, that that's happened. He's feeling guilt over it. He's feeling bad over it. It's understandable. And a lot more sympathetic than fucking Sonny. <laughs> yes, I, I, I am still on the Sonny fuck you train, you know? Yes, Sonny <laughs> is good with the kids. Okay, you know, he can give some good advice every now and then. But still, Sonny, you're a goddamn hypocrite. Shut the fuck up. And, and get knocked down to peg five or six somewhere around there. I don't remember which peg I mentioned. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. oh, there, speaking of hypocrisy, uh, Alexis actually admitted to being a hypocrite. Oh, yeah. To Julian. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? That, that first step is admission. You know, yeah. And then, and then they, I, I don't think they got interrupted. It looked like they just had sex right there in the art gallery. It did, it did, did. <laughs> <laughs> That art gallery is fully Christian. And next time Ava walks in, she's like, why does it smell like vagina in here? <laughs> oh, that was uh, uh, Alexis and me. <coughs> oh, I, I could just see, would you, do you mind not having your affair right here in my art gallery? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, unfortunately, we would never see a scene like that on, on daytime TV. At least not at this point. <laughs> that would be hilarious, though. Oh. Oh dear. But um yeah. <coughs> so is there anything else that we might have missed? Um let's see. I, I know I know I noted Silas's oh my god, what the fuck? I'm gonna cut you bitch face. Yes. Oh I know I I know we noted Levi. Yeah, I'm gonna hate Levi. I, I think I probably am you know and and he he's boning Maxie it's like it's like uh, I suppose they're good for each other but wow just where did you f- pick up this guy I mean it's like, I mean it's, I know I know he was doing the, the 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 thing with the helping and the rebuilding and the ecosystem oh God and he, we've got oh God are we gonna go into a Greenpeace type story again? Because they did that back in the early 90s, right before Matt came on. Oh, you know, and, and I have nothing against, you know, helping the environment or what have you. But some stories, they tend to get a little anvilicious about it. And I hope this doesn't turn into that. At least not with Levi. I, I, I don't know what they're going to do with Levi. I really don't. But But hopefully he won't be quite as annoying as he was in his first appearance uh, any thoughts um I don't know it's, <laughs> I, I, I I I'm glad Kristen Storms is back from her uh, maternity leave mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure she is having fun being back but I really hope that they make her less annoying soon because yeah. <coughs> like you know, she 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 decided that she was going on an eat, pray, love trip, mm-hmm. and apparently that worked, and she feels all enlightened. And I'm like, uh. Not just, but, <laughs> but, but she she well she took the love part quite 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 literally too. Yeah. I'm sure because. <laughs> well, she ate, she prayed, and then she found Levi, and well, there's her love. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Or, or at least something. sex, at least. Yeah. Which, hey, you know, you know, not, nothing wrong with that. She probably could, she probably could have used it, you know, because I think in universe it had been a while for her, so why not? <laughs> you know, why not get 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 these characters laid every now and then? I, it was like for a while Nancy Lee Grand was complaining that her character had like no love scenes or what have you for a while. She her character had a <laughs> spell and and. And then Alexis and Julian start having their sex scenes, and she's like, "Yes!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Of course, it helps that uh, Nancy Lee Grant is attracted to William DeVry. <laughs> that, that that does help a little bit. Yeah. So uh, they they have they and you know they have really good chemistry together. They do. They really do. I I love watching those two together. <laughs> oh, so so oh god and and by the way, if I, I've I've brought up past uh, plot lines and stuff. Uh, there is a YouTube channel. I think it's uh, M's General Hospital Highlights that you can find on YouTube. They highlight. They have some. They're they're still working on some other ones, but they've got highlights from mostly uh, stuff having to do with the Spencers and Cassidines, and with like Faison and and characters like that. Those types of stories. They they have them all archived on their channel. They're still working around. I think. The particular ones that they have on there. I know they've got the Ice Princess, naturally. Uh, they've got the uh, Endgame one, where Stavros comes back. and Well, comes back the first time, rather. Uh, they also have the uh, Water Pathogen story, where Jerry Jacks tried to... Uh, well, 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 where Jerry Jacks did poison the water supply, and then and then uh, blackmailed everybody. He had uh, Faison's return, second return, actually. Um... Which was back when Robin had been kidnapped and he was masquerading as Duke Lavery. Uh, I think they're also starting to archive some of the more recent ones, like when uh, Victor came back after however many years. <laughs> and, and his scenes with Liesel and, and Nicholas. So uh, if you want to go check them out, go check them out. If you want to check out some like uh, older stories and see, and see some of the things some of the characters are talking about, or, what, or even what I'm talking about. Um... Because I do, make, because obviously I do make reference to them. You kind of have to. They have a whole wiki for it as well. Go check that out. And with that, I think that's going to be about it. Because it's about three or three minutes or so left on the timer, and it's going to pe- probably take us about that long to get the whole spiel out. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, if we wanted to find you on social media, Namio, where could we find you? You can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on. Tumblr, uh, it's Namio's Corner. Uh, you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. What? And you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. All right, and me. You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr, both at Gomer Two One Double X. You can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And just yesterday, I think it was yesterday, the day before. I submitted Thespian Talk and this particular show to iTunes, so hopefully we'll be able to you'll be able to get these shows from iTunes as well. So that would be that would be great, fingers crossed. And you could also if you like the show and you want to toss money at us, you know, to help with production costs and, and, and everything there. A lot of that stuff is detailed on the Patreon page at patreon.com slash gomer two one double X and if you also were looking for some artwork to be done or some animation, uh, check out my girlfriend's Patreon page, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. By the way, she's an award-winning animator. Woo. Seriously, check out her stuff. Go check it out. She, she does a good job. If you want a good example of her artwork, well, not only does she have a portfolio, but if you watch my stuff, the uh, Pokemon Quartz Gomer Play series that I have up on my site, that's her artwork. So go check it out. I'm also I'm also talking to her about getting some different artwork for this show and my other podcast as well. So we're gonna have updated artwork, <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. So that is it for me. Yeah, okay, about two minutes for that spiel. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm getting better at getting faster at it. So uh, yeah, next week again we mentioned Pat. Among the other things, we're gonna be end up talking about Patrick and Sabrina. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> I look forward to it. So uh, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.